Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to have our or start our second playlist of geometry topics uh, for my college geometry course. This is week two. This will be based on part two of my notes, and there'll be a series of videos going through this material. The material in this part two or in our this playlist is about incidence properties in geometries, and then we're going to introduce several finite geometries. Uh, dealing with different uh, incidence properties. As always, I have a hyperlinked con table of contents to my notes. And uh, here is the uh, the basic topics that we're going to be covering in this playlist. We'll talk about a little bit about multiple geometries. Then we'll talk about introducing and illustrating incidence postulates in Euclidean geometry. How we do that in GeoGebra, and there I'll introduce a few GeoGebra activity or tools. We'll talk about several finite geometries and some very very small number of points and lines in these geometries and they will illustrate uh, some simple systems by which we can be very careful about building some proofs. We'll talk about the idea of dual geometries. I'll give you some hints and warnings about writing proofs. We'll talk about uh, we'll review the unified geometry incidence postulates definitions and propositions Prove Proposition 1 from our list uh, for Unified Geometry. Um, we'll talk about affine plane geometries, projected plane geometries, just barely. We'll just introduce what those things are about, and we'll talk about Young's geometry. So let's do the first part of that right now. So one thing that was accomplished by the discovery of hyperbolic geometry in the early 19th century was that we no longer considered Euclidean geometry as the only valid geometry. In fact, there are infinitely many geometries that we might study. Recall that we will consider a geometry to be a set of points and possibly lines and planes that satisfy, satisfy some given set of postulates. The geometry will include not only the set of points, lines, and planes, but also the postulates, definitions, propositions, and proofs concerning the system. Now, last week, you were introduced to the initial existence and incidence postulates for what we're going to call unified geometry. We'll relist those in a later video in this playlist. And this more general geometry will include several other geometries. At this point, this includes not only traditional Euclidean geometry, but also taxicab geometry, hyperbolic geometry, and with a few modifications that we'll introduce later, spherical geometry. Neutral geometry, also known as absolute geometry, will refer to a geometry that has all the postulates from Euclidean geometry the ones we've introduced so far and the ones we'll introduce later, except for the parallel postulate. Neutral geometry includes both Euclidean and hyperbolic geometries. So at this point, you should be pretty familiar with Euclidean geometry from your K-12 and university courses, including middle school mathematics, high school geometry, trigonometry, and calculus. Even if you're just watching this as a high school student or junior high student, you've at least seen Euclidean geometry in elementary school. And you've you've talked you're familiar with things like triangles and lines and squares and circles and so forth in Euclidean geometry. However, these other geometries like you know taxicab, hyperbolic, spherical, and some finite geometries we're going to talk about in this playlist will be probably completely new to you. So you don't really know what I'm talking about when I say those at all. And that's okay. Never fear. We will be explaining them all in more detail later. For now, just note that these same postulates for unified geometry are also axioms for multiple geometries, including the familiar infinite uh, Euclidean geometry. When we use the term neutral geometry, we include those postulates that are valid in both Euclidean and hyperbolic geometry. All of the Euclidean postulates introduced thus far and the ones we'll introduce later, except for the parallel postulate. Neutral geometry is neutral with respect to the parallel postulate. And there are three different versions of the parallel postulate. The Euclidean geometry parallel postulate says, given a line L and a point P not on L, there exists exactly one line through P parallel to line L. The hyperbolic geometry parallel postulate says, given a line L and a point not on L, there exist infinitely many lines through P parallel to line L. And in spherical geometry, um, given a line L and a point 
P not on the R, there does not exist any line through P parallel to L. So parallel lines don't exist in spherical geometry, but they do in Euclidean and hyperbolic geometries. Since unified geometry does not have any of these three postulates, it will, it will ultimately include all three of these geometries. And like I, I said earlier, we will have to modify one or two of the postulates that we have so far to be able to include spherical geometry. So we'll do that uh, probably next week. Uh, but we will return to these various geometries and the consequence of the parallel postulate options in subsequent weeks as we go along. This is actually one of the big, big historical stories of ge geometry is how uh, this parallel postulate uh, affects things, right? So let's, uh, let's stop there and we'll come back in our next video as we carry on.